So you think you know a lot about GTA Online. If you get too drunk in your own nightclub, you won't even be allowed to access your own nightclub management tab. In fact, it'll pop up with a special message saying you're too drunk to make smart decisions right now. Some of the random NPCs on top of the LS car meets roof will instantly die when you run into them. Strange. On PC, you can actually just press F8 to drop ammo for whatever gun you're holding, but this doesn't work with Mark II ammo. Widowmaker ammo is cheaper than minigun ammo, even though they're the same ammo type. The Widowmaker is $142 for 100 rounds and the minigun is $158 for 50 rounds. You can actually duck down while driving and you can use this to reduce the chance of you actually getting shot while you're in your car. This is a cool little tip. You can actually remove your wanted level by calling Johan and requesting a nightclub goods source mission. So if Lester's on cooldown, this is another way to lose the cops. By holding down both of your analog sticks and then either pressing the right or left bumper, you can change your remote without even going into the interaction menu. When using an RC vehicle, you can actually teleport to where it is. Drive the RC car anywhere you want on the map and then just start a job and then back out of that job. You'll teleport to wherever your car is and not where you originally started using the car. The heavy sniper makes a bolt action sound when you're scoped in and you shoot, but when you're not scoped in, you don't hear the sound. You're probably wondering what happens if you fly to the very edge of the map. And the answer? Your vehicle just completely breaks and you insta die. Honestly, fair enough. By enabling quick launch in settings on your phone, you can double press up to instantly pull up Snapmatic. That's right, you can have shortcuts for your phone in GTA, as well as real life. Not really sure when you'd want to use this one, but when you're in the pause menu, you can press the hide menu button to stay in your menu, but it's going to hide the menu so that you can still see what's going on in the game. So you're in your menu, but you're not in your menu, I guess? I, I don't know. The easiest way to kill a helicopter in GTA Online is actually just to shoot the blade at the back of the helicopter. Shoot its tail and it'll be down in a couple of shots. Instead of letting your character break the glass to a car with his elbow when you're trying to steal it, you can just shoot the glass as you're approaching it and it'll make the whole process a lot quicker. Motorcycles can actually climb up walls pretty effectively. So if you're ever being chased, you can use this to get some pretty cool getaways. When your character is aiming down sights, they can walk up places they can't normally walk. For example, I couldn't walk up this hill here, but I aimed down sight and apparently my character now has the legs of a superhero. Also while aiming down sights, if you press G or whatever your grenade button is, your character will throw a grenade while still aiming down sights with a gun. Instead of breaking into the police impound to steal your vehicle back after it's been impounded, you can actually just call your assistant and she'll retrieve it for $1,000. That shouldn't be a problem. I'll have your personal vehicle collected as soon as possible. If you're a veteran player, you may have forgotten that the first time you die in Grand Theft Auto Online, this cutscene plays. Brother, welcome. You see, they said I was a charlatan, a fraud, a nothing. But I am a miracle. Look and behold in wonder. And ask yourself, what does mighty Chris Formage, leader of the Epsilon program, do with his enormous power? Why, he uses it to watch people, of course. Join me any time you like in watching. They never find out, and they can't harm you. It is the greatest pleasure on earth. And trust me, I've lain with a multitude of women. If you get the fortune teller Madame Nazar game in your arcade, once you play it enough times, she'll give you three different sets of numbers. These form a phone number that you can call in game where Madame Nazar is going to speak to you. That's kind of creepy considering she's from Red Dead Redemption. This game also has another really cool easter egg where Rockstar is clearly referencing players doing car duplication glitches.
As a VIP casino member, you can access fast travel through the limousine service. This can be done through the phone, in your penthouse, or through Tom Connors in the casino itself. If you have other players in your CEO, through the management tab, you can activate formation flying assist. This will make it a lot easier to fly in formation and will even let slower aircraft go a lot faster than they normally can. If you complete all of the Doomsday Heists, you can now call Lester for free to get the cops off you instead of paying the money that you would before. Flying planes at above 1,000 feet actually makes the plane go faster. Even though Sprunk has been in the game since the beginning, Rockstar only added it as a snack in late 2022. This was during an E. Cola vs. Sprunk event where players could pick a side and whichever drink was drank more that week was the winner. And the winner was E. Cola, in case you're wondering. The Tornado Mariaki is one of the most rare vehicles in the entire game. To get it, you need to come up to this mountain at exactly 7pm. You'll then only have a few seconds to shoot the driver out of this vehicle and go over and steal it. The most expensive vehicle in all of Grand Theft Auto Online is the Luxor Deluxe Plane. This thing is $10 million, and really the only thing special about it is the fact that it's gold. On the other hand, the cheapest vehicle in the game is the BMX bike for, well, just $800. Which means for the price of one Luxor Deluxe, you could actually get yourself 12,500 BMX bikes. I know what I would choose. Rockstar used to charge you $150,000 to change from the female to the male assistant in your CEO office. They have since removed that feature, and honestly, fair enough, that's not very pro-consumer. This voice line from your assistant in your agency confirms that Trevor is still alive and for some reason was looking for Franklin. Hey, this crazy dude swung by earlier, dressed like a hobo, like really on edge. She swore him and Mr. Clinton used to work together got really angry when I said he wasn't available. I had to stop him from shitting on the desk. Seriously. If you get a minute with Mr. Clinton, would you let him know? This phone call from Ron confirms that Trevor, again, is still alive, but also took off for some reason. In case you're looking for me, I gotta go tell some folks what's what. Yeah, I've been waiting for something like this to happen since Trevor took off. Vultures showing up in Sandy Shores looking for scraps. Don't worry though, Ron's got it all under control. Unless, you know, you wanted to help? Backup would be nice. They've taken over Trevor's old place at Ace Liquor. The most expensive property in Grand Theft Auto Online is $4 million. It's the Maze Bank Tower. The cheapest property in the game is a two-car garage at Unit 124 Popular Street, which is normally $25,000. If you take your Kasatka too far underwater, the Kasatka will cave in on itself and you'll die. On July 26, 2022, Rockstar Games added AirPods into GTA Online. Rockstar, being the jokers that they are, named these beat-off earphones. Yeah. This penthouse decoration is a poorly drawn version of the Bullworth Academy crest. This is, of course, a direct reference to Bully, and at the time this came out, people thought this was a little bit of a teaser for Bully 2. In your CEO office, you can actually play Snake in GTA Online. All you need is at least two players to sit on the couch, and you can verse each other. It's pretty fun. Rockstar has already started to leave old generation consoles behind. On the PS5 and Xbox Series X versions of the game, they've made an entire new class of vehicles called HSW vehicles, as well as a brand new set of paints. You can take out way more money at once from an ATM as opposed to going on your phone. When you try and withdraw money from your phone, you can only take out $1 million at a time. Holding the handbrake on your Oppressor Mark II actually increases the speed a fair bit. So instead of just flying across the map, make sure you're holding that handbrake and it'll go about 20% faster. Nice. 
when you go on the internet the hand cursor isn't actually pointing the index finger yeah it's it's pointing the middle finger very sneaky rockstar when your character slides over the anus remus for some reason they do this really glitched spin animation i don't know what's going on here for some reason you can tip the janitor in your nightclub he's just chilling outside the toilets and i guess you could make him rich if you want I'm surprised more people don't know this, but you can actually spectate other players in GTA Online through your apartment or basically any screen that you have. Just sit down and scroll through players in the lobby. If you want to tip, spectate level 1s, it is hilarious. While scoping out Kaya Perico, you can actually poison the guard's water supply, making them weaker in the finale. In the Grand Theft Auto V story, Franklin has a poster on his wall that says Los Santos owns you. However, in the agency, in Franklin's office, he's got a new one that says you own Los Santos. Yeah, Franklin made it. Also in his office, he still has the Employee of the Month trophy that Simeon gave him way back at the start of the story. But a few of the letters are falling off. If you place sticky bombs on El Rubio's helicopter, if you blow these up when he starts to try to hunt you down, he's randomly just gonna fly away from the map. Like, I don't know, maybe he got scared or something? It's pretty hard to find, but the Loch Ness monster is surrounding Cayo Perico. It's gonna disappear when you get too close to it, but you might be able to see it from a distance. Rockstar thinks the Cayo Perico heist is way too good because they keep nerfing it almost every single update. Some of the most notable changes is they've added a few random cameras around the map. They've heavily buffed the Juggernaut's health. They made it so guards notice dead bodies now, which makes the heist a lot harder. But the biggest nerf was when they changed it so that once you complete it solo, you can't complete it again for about two and a half hours. Now that is rough. During the Kaya Perico scope out, when you're approaching the tower, you can actually quite easily tell where the hacking cabinet is going to be. If this guard here is facing away from you, that means that the cabinet is going to be somewhere up in the tower. If there's no guard there, then the cabinet is going to be on the ground. If you have a motorbike, you can skip one of the most difficult parts of the Kaya Perico scope out mission. You can do that by just taking this jump to the left of this watchtower here. As of early 2023, there are 101 weapons in Grand Theft Auto Online, with 63 of those being added post-launch. For about one year after Grand Theft Auto V came out, Rockstar made three vehicles exclusive to players who ordered the Collector's Edition. Those vehicles are the Carbon RS, the Hot Knife, and the Chameleon. But about a year after launch, Rockstar made these available for all players to purchase. As of February 2023, there are 746 separate controllable vehicles in Grand Theft Auto Online. That is a lot. For the first few years after the Diamond Casino's release date, you couldn't actually run in the casino. That's right, you had to slow walk all the way across it. I don't know if it's funny or sad, or maybe a bit of both, but Rockstar actually advertised this as one of the standout features added in the Criminal Enterprise DLC. I, I don't know, that's a bit weird. It should just have been something that was always in the game. Instead of blowing their brains out like they normally would, if you have a suppressor on your pistol, when you take the easy way out, your character is actually just going to take a pill. The double action revolver from Red Dead Redemption 2 has its own unique stow animation. This is pretty cool. If you take the Macbeth whiskey shot, your character is very quickly going to pass out drunk and then you're going to wake up at a random location somewhere across the map. If you order the Diamond Champagne from the Diamond Casino and Resort Bar, you actually get to play a sort of mini game where you get to shake and then spray the champagne everywhere. You can buy an artwork from the casino that looks very similar to the Vanos gaming crew. The Vanos crew were and still are some of the biggest Grand Theft Auto Online creators and they've played a huge part in the game's success. 
I know we've all tried this one, but no, you can't stop the train in GTA 5. Taking too many photos in the Diamond Casino will actually get you kicked out by the security. The F1 cars have so much downforce that you can actually drive them upside down. The Miljet can hold 16 players at once, which ties it with the bus as the only two vehicles that can carry that many people. We all know that Mount Chiliad is the tallest mountain in the game, but do you know how tall it is? No? Well, it's 2,619 feet above water level, or 798 meters. The Diamond Casino is actually banned in a lot of countries where you can play GTA Online. That's because of their strict gambling laws, which means they can't actually even go inside the casino at all. Rockstar heavily teased single-player DLC in 2014, but seemingly cut it and instead chose to add the story characters into GTA Online. But we're still waiting for that Michael DLC. On the north side of the map, if you blow open this door here, you can go inside this incredibly freaky abandoned mineshaft. This thing is, it's really spooky. The Grand Theft Auto V map is 29.28 square miles, or 75.84 square kilometers. Yeah, that's huge. Over the past couple of years, Rockstar made two cars bulletproof that weren't meant to be bulletproof. Rockstar somehow messed up and made the standard Karuma bulletproof, as well as the Sterling GT. And no, this wasn't fixed instantly. Both of these were in the game for months. Grand Theft Auto Online actually does have a battle royale mode. It's called Mode Awards, and it's an adversary mode where players jump out, get in highly weaponized vehicles, and try and be the last team standing while the zone shrinks. It's actually pretty fun. In the Los Santos Drug Wars DLC, half of these missions are actually just reskinned versions of single player missions that you completed as Trevor. You be the judge, is this just lazy game design or is Rockstar sort of trying to make us all nostalgic? In the Franklin and Lamar short trip missions, Lamar actually teases Franklin with this voice line here, telling Franklin what he looks like when he activates his special ability. And this is a fair race. Don't be doing none of that supernatural freaky driving and shit. Man, what you mean? Man, you know what I mean when you crawl across side like you're constipated or some shit. Man, fuck you. I don't look like that. Yeah, you do. Hey, you know what I'm talking about. At the end of one of the short trip missions, Rockstar recreated the massive viral meme about Franklin's yee ass haircut. Man, fuck you, man. My kids up in there. I don't want your ass up in my house, Nick. Man, they don't hate me because your kids love me more than they love you. Maybe if you quit being so uptight and let Uncle Lamar give him some game, you'll have some harmony in your household. Nah, I just wanted to get in the hot tub, but now, I don't even want to get in an old funky ass cum bucket. Fuck around and get pink eye. Cause you's a dirty ass b itch. What? As much as we love to hate on them, Rockstar actually has implemented a lot of the feedback from the community and creators over the past few years. For example, Dark Viper AU always complained that it was way too hard to eat snacks, so Rockstar added them to the weapon wheel. In one of my videos, one of my subscribers hilariously suggested that Rockstar should add a take all snacks button instead of us having to buy snacks one by one. Then a couple months later, it was in the game. Buy the snacks in the game. Buy all yeah, the snacks. Right? But the these are the suggestions we need, boys. None of this, 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 none of this. No lag, anti-cheat, who cares? <laughs> Buy all <laughs> snacks. <laughs> Another example was when the entire community was screaming out how overpowered the Oppressor Mark II was. And that leads us into our next fact. Rockstar has heavily nerfed the Oppressor Mark II multiple times, with the biggest nerf coming on July 26, 2022, where they doubled the cooldown of countermeasures and significantly decreased how aggressive the rockets are. It's hard to hit anything with these now. 
There are 25 radio stations in Grand Theft Auto Online. Seven of those were added as DLC. Blonded Los Santos, LS Underground Radio, iFruit Radio, Cult FM, Still Slippin' Los Santos, Music Locker Radio, and Moto Mami. To date, Rockstar Games has added 42 content updates in Grand Theft Auto Online, but nowadays, unfortunately, they only add two a year. At the end of 2020, Rockstar Games did probably their biggest band wave ever. During lockdown, everyone was playing Grand Theft Auto Online since it was free on the Epic Games Store. Players then discovered an apartment glitch that made it easy to make millions and millions of dollars, and Rockstar reacted by resetting hundreds of thousands of players back to level 1. Ouch. Many players have speculated that Dax, who is one of the main characters in the Los Santos Drug Wars DLC, was actually meant to be Trevor. However, it seems like Trevor's voice actor has had a falling out with Rockstar Games and doesn't seem too keen to keep playing the character. All of the Dax missions take place in very similar locations to the Trevor missions and he has very similar voice lines to him as well. What do you think? Back on PS3 and Xbox 360, the character creator was completely different to how it looks now. Just have a look at this. This looked very, very different. I can't believe people still don't know this one, but a lot of players only started playing around 2020. The Diamond Casino and Resort wasn't always there. It used to be just an old casino that you couldn't go into. You can still see what this looks like by going into story mode. Upon release, Grand Theft Auto Online's story was set before the Grand Theft Auto V story. However, now in 2023, it's caught up to present day, and this was confirmed by Rockstar themselves. The timeline of GTA Online now is pretty much present day. We didn't necessarily expect to be here eight years later, but if we were to stay in that whole timeline, we wouldn't be able to release modern vehicles. Across its almost 10 year lifespan, Grand Theft Auto V has sold 175 million copies, making it one of the highest selling games of all time. El Rubio's right hand man, Gustavo, is actually a throwback to a character from Vice City named Gonzalez. Not only do they have somewhat similar names, they also wear the exact same shirt. Too bad El Rubio fed him to the Panther. Dan Hauser, the head writer and co-founder of Rockstar Games, left the company in 2020. He started his own new company called Absurd Ventures in Games, and now they're working on a blockchain game. Interesting. Leslie Benzies, the president of Rockstar North during GTA V's development, left the company in 2016 and filed a lawsuit against Rockstar for unpaid royalties. Rockstar told him to go and build a rocket boy, so Leslie started his own game company called Build a Rocket Boy Studios. They're now working on a game called Everywhere that apparently is coming out in 2023. It looks pretty interesting, kind of weird. It could be good or it could flop, I'm not too sure yet. During the first mission of the Contract DLC, you and Franklin drive through the movie studio. Franklin then says he has a friend who works here, which confirms that Michael is still alive and working at the movie studio. Man, shit, I know one of the producers around here. I hope his ass ain't at work today. On December 6, 2022, Rockstar Games increased how much money shark cards gave you. Shark card sales must have been down because they increased the price by 20 to 25% across the board. In September 2015, Rockstar announced that there would be no further updates for the PS3 and Xbox 360 versions of GTA Online. On June 16th in 2021, Rockstar announced that they would shut down the PS3 and Xbox 360 versions of GTA Online on December 16th, 2021, so they gave everyone a six-month warning. PS3 and Xbox 360, rest in peace. When GTA Online launched in 2013, the Truff 8 Adder was the fastest supercar in the game. Now though, the fastest supercar in the game is the Devist 8 with the Howl's Special Works upgrade. What's funny though, is that isn't the car with the top speed in the entire game. That actually belongs to a muscle car. It's the Vigero ZX with the Howl's Special Works upgrade. Kinda strange. After millions of players complaining, finally in 2022, Rockstar Games buffed almost all of the heists in the game. They gave a 75% pay increase to the Fleeter job, Humane Labs Raid, Prison Break, and Series A funding heists, and a 50% bonus to the pack Standard and Doomsday Act 1, 2, and 3. Despite there being no windows, you actually can't shoot while you're in an open wheel car. A full year before the contract DLC came out, Rockstar actually teased the Dr. Dre collab at the start of the Cayo Perico heist. Dr. Dre was actually gonna come to Cayo Perico with us, but that was the moment that he noticed his phone got stolen, which set up the plot for the contract a year later. Rockstar 
paid a modder $10,000 for fixing the load times for GTA 5 on PC. I don't know if that's happy or sad that Rockstar couldn't fix it themselves, but hey, congrats to the modder. When GTA Online launched, there were so many bugs that were causing people's characters to get deleted that Rockstar actually had to remove shark cards from the game completely. It wasn't for some time later until they added them back. When shark cards finally came back, the highest possible amount of money you could get through a shark card was $1.25 million, which really goes to show how much inflation has infected GTA Online prices. Each time you get put in a bad sport lobby, the timer doubles. So the first time will be two days, then four days the next time you get put in one, eight days, 16, 32, 64 days, and so on. I hope you don't get put in one for more than 64 days, because good luck. When a male character is wearing a dunce cap in a bad sport lobby, it will of course say dunce, but when a female character is wearing one, it's only gonna say D. I wonder why. Rockstar hired real gang members from around LA to voice the gang members in Los Santos. So yeah, the gang voices are pretty authentic. You used to be able to drive vehicles into the back of the Bombushka, but people started putting their business sale vehicles in the back to speed up cell missions, and Rockstar wasn't a fan of that, so they patched it. Dancing in your nightclub actually increases your nightclub popularity. Despite what newer players may think, heists weren't in GTA Online when it launched. Players had to wait almost two years for heists when they came out on March 10th in 2015. If you're in stealth mode on the Kaya Perico heist, you can actually bump into guards and sort of move them out of the way and you still won't get detected. Instead of stealing supplies or buying supplies for your businesses, you can actually just let it get raided and then restart it and it'll give you a much easier setup mission that will completely restock your business. Launching yourself into this cage will completely bug your character out. You used to be able to glitch your Oppressor Mark II or any vehicle in the game onto the Kaya Perico Island during the setup mission. But Rockstar patched this so now speedrunners actually use a Sparrow glitch that allows you to get a helicopter on the island. KD ratios only now work in death matches. Killing other players in free roam no longer affects your KD. If you land perfectly, no matter what height you're falling from, motorbikes don't have any fall damage. I don't know how my character is strong enough to stay onto this bike without breaking their entire body, but okay. You can actually hide in bushes and the police won't be able to see you. I know, it's like this is Fortnite or something. I was so surprised when this actually worked, but yes, this is a thing. Changing your headwear or mask will drop your wanted level by one star as long as you're out of sight of the police. Pretty cool tactic. You can rapid fire your RPG by going into first person, clicking fire, quickly switching to your throwable and then back to your RPG. You've probably seen people doing this in online lobbies and know they're not cheating, they're just abusing this method. I tested every vehicle that has a boost in the game and it turns out the scramjet actually has the longest boost. Cool. If you perform a burnout on a trail of gasoline, the backfire will actually light up the gas. Stabbing someone with a knife actually puts blood on the knife. That's a pretty cool little detail. Shout out to Rockstar for that. Shooting an empty gun while robbing a store will cause the clerk to pull out a gun and shoot back. Pretty cool that the NPCs will actually notice that you don't have any ammo. You don't actually have to drive over slick mines to activate them. Simply walking over them will activate them as well, and it can be absolutely hilarious if you do this in a crowd of NPCs. For whatever reason, the electric Amani tech vehicles with the armor upgrades can tank way more explosives than the non-electric vehicles. It's about three or four for the non-electric vehicles, and then your electric Amani Tech ones can tank over 12. When you're in an area where you can't sprint but you can still jog, it's faster to jump and jog than it is to just jog. This is useful for situations like the Diamond Casino Heist when you're in the man trap. You actually can pop tires with a taser, even though it's not a bullet, apparently it's strong enough to completely pop one of these. Did you know if you tap the trigger while blind firing a grenade launcher, it's going to become rapid fire and shoot full auto. If you can time it right and aim and enter a vehicle at almost the exact same time, the driver will just jump out and run away. This speeds up the process of stealing vehicles. You can instantly stop any vehicle, even if it's at max speed, by quickly switching to single player through the character selection menu and then cancelling that screen. 
Molotovs are one of the few weapons that you can't buy from ammunition. But most players don't know that if you go into your submarine, into the kitchen, you can get them for free just sitting there on your table. You can delete every single contact from your phone in GTA Online except for Mechanic and Moore's Mutual, which kind of makes sense. Unless you have bulletproof tires, doing a burnout for too long will actually pop your tires. If you turn your TV on in one of your apartments, it will also turn the TV on in every other apartment that you own. You can actually fast travel back to your CEO office from anywhere on the map by calling your assistant and requesting a luxury helicopter. Once inside, you can click quick travel and you'll teleport there. Your character walks faster upstairs if you're in first person as opposed to if you're in third person. Not really sure why this one's a thing. It's actually faster to rank up in Arena Wars by spinning the wheel in your Arena Workshop than if you actually wanted to play Arena Wars. Yeah, it's, it's faster to spin a wheel than actually playing the game. Crazy. This one's caused a lot of confusion. If Chop isn't in the office with Franklin in your agency, he'll still be somewhere else in the agency, probably upstairs, most likely on your bed. Rockstar regularly reuses interiors in almost every single mission in the entire game. Just in the Calle Perico heist setups alone, you have to go to reused interiors like the document forgery office and the garage in the vehicle workshop. This is all to save time so that Rockstar can release more updates. If you're on console, you can actually yell into your microphone while robbing convenience stores to speed up the process. The original blonde loading screen girl for GTA 5 and GTA Online is completely wrong geographically. You can go to the beach and look for yourself. This is not where this should be. The windows on your bunker bed actually shut at night time. If you tip the nightclub bathroom attendant 577 times, you'll unlock the Epsilon robes. After a few hundred tips, a pop-up will say chasing the truth, so keep going until it says bearing the truth and then you'll have the robes. Back on April 1st in 2020, Rockstar did one of the ultimate April Fool's pranks by adding snow into the game for just one day. Now that is a pretty good prank. The mysterious Madrazo files, which is the whole point we actually start the Kaya Perico heist in the first place, the files are quite literally just photos between Patricia and Trevor from single player, showing scandalous pictures that they took during their affair in the game. Luckily for Patricia though, Martin Madrazo burns these files in the final cutscene. There's actually hidden dialogue in the Dr. Dre contract that's completely different if a player has a penthouse and a yacht compared to players who don't. Take a listen. If you wanted to reach level 1000 in GTA Online, you would need 47,551,850 RP. That would take you thousands and thousands of hours. You can't take any open vehicles where the player is exposed through a car wash. Now, obviously this makes sense, but this would be absolutely hilarious if you could. I hope this is a thing in GTA 6. You have to be level 100 in order to be able to buy the heavy sniper from ammunition. But if you're not a high enough level, you can just buy the weapons upgrade in the Kasatka or any of the properties that can get it. And you can just buy the Mark II version instead at any level. And the Mark II version is better in every single way. The new street dealers are one of the only NPCs in the entire game that you can't actually kill or damage. Did you know that if you bought the Patriot tire smoke on any car, you can no longer customize that vehicle in LS customs yeah the only way you can actually fix this is by going into the arena war workshop and fixing it there which means any player that had this bug before arena wars was introduced into the game could never customize that vehicle again there are some notable features from single player missing from online 
Some of the most notable ones are the tow truck that features heavily in the single player, isn't available in online, or the cable car that takes you to the top of Mount Chiliad. These were likely removed due to their trolling capabilities or just the amount of bugs that could happen. You can actually get inside of the train in GTA Online. This has been in the game for so long that I'm not actually sure if it's a bug or a feature. There's a ghost on top of Mount Gordo. It only appears between 11 p.m. and midnight though. This is the ghost of Jolene Cranley Evans, the deceased wife of Jock Cranley, and at her feet, in blood, is the name Jock. That's creepy. Speaking of the Mount Gordo ghost, on the facility webpage for the Mount Gordo facility, it's the only one that states it is not haunted, even though, well, it definitely is. There's a very popular racing strategy that speedrunners use called curb boosting. This speeds up your car quite a bit and it just involves you driving on and off of the curb repeatedly. After doing 600 resupply missions for your bunker, if you start another mission between 9pm and 11pm at night, you have a chance to get this secret UFO resupply mission, which has aliens and an alien egg. Another secret is the alien tattoo. The only way to get this is by completing the secret resupply mission. Then on a stormy or rainy night between 1 and 4 a.m., if you take a Macbeth shot in your nightclub, you have a chance to spawn on top of Mount Chiliad and watch a UFO fly away, and then you'll have the tattoo. I honestly don't know how anyone even ever found it. If you own the casino penthouse and you take a Macbeth shot in the casino, there's a very small chance you'll randomly wake up with a secret truck mission that you have to deliver back to the casino. There's also another very rare instance if you take a Macbeth shot in the casino. If you're lucky, you'll wake up on top of a random building wearing the Kiflom t-shirt. This is one of the most rare shirts in the entire game. You can unlock a hidden gunman in the Diamond Casino Heist. His name is Patrick McReary, a fan favorite from GTA 4. All you have to do is be in a lobby with at least three players, wait by the military base, and wait for a blue dot to appear on the map. This will be a police escort. If you take out the cops and deliver him back to the safe house, you'll be able to use him in the Diamond Casino heist. Currently, in 2023, there are 18 different games to play in the arcade. You need to buy these from the laptop inside your casino, and some of these are actually throwbacks to old Rockstar games. Shooting a flare into another player's parachute will instantly destroy it and send them falling towards the ground. Rockstar Games recently removed the iFruit app from app stores. In the first dose missions, when your character goes on this massive trip, you'll have to chase down this bunny rabbit and continue to hunt it over and over again. If you're actually playing this mission with other players though, one of those players will be that rabbit, and whoever kills the rabbit then becomes the rabbit. It's actually a cool little mini game. You can actually only get away with running over two pedestrians in GTA Online. If you run over and kill a third one, no matter where you are, the cops will be alerted. You can drive any car underwater for as long as you want, as long as the exhaust is above the water. Now, for most cars, the exhaust is on the bottom of the car, but for some, it actually comes out the top, and it leads to some really weird instances like this. As long as there's a little tiny bit of water, you can actually take a boat wherever you like, which can lead to some really strange things happening like this. You can stick tear gas to a wall by waiting for the beeps to stop and then throwing it. Explosions from a sticky bomb are in a 90 degree direction, which means if you're good enough, you can avoid the explosions in certain situations. The Sparrow helicopter has a top speed of 168.75 miles per hour, 
giving it the highest top speed for a helicopter in the game. But if you wanted to know which helicopter was fastest around a track, that title belongs to the Kanata. This was discovered when the YouTuber Bruffy1322 discovered this by racing it around a track in 51.961 seconds, three seconds faster than any other helicopter previously. Similar to the double action revolver we spoke about in part one, the Switchblade also has a custom animation as well. The chandeliers in the Pacific Standard Bank are incredibly bugged and this, this is just hilarious. You can do stuff like this. You can cut your parachute from any height and when you do that, you'll survive fall damage into the water. You can rob any store by shooting the cash registers in there. Now, of course, this isn't an official robbery like the convenience stores where the guy will hand you the bag and it won't pay you as much money, but it's still a cool little feature that's in the game. If you complete your daily objectives for 28 days in a row, you're going to get a bonus of $750,000. That's a lot of work for not even a million dollars. The Lost Slam Van is one of the most rare vehicles in the entire game. The only way you can actually win it is from the Casino Mystery Prize on the Lucky Wheel, and even then the chances are very, very small. Speaking of the casino wheel, if you're wondering why you never win the podium vehicle, that's because you only actually have a 5% chance. And if you're wondering why you always get RP, well, have a look at your screen, that's probably why. A lot of players don't actually know that not only do you have hair color, but you can also change the color of your highlights in your hair. So you can make it look cool and look like you have multicolored hair. You can actually go AFK in the LS car meet by choosing any vehicle, going into the test track, and then backing out of the car meet but sitting in this screen right here. As long as you don't tab out of the game, you can stay in this screen forever. That way you can let your businesses fill up in the backgrounds and make money passively. Just be careful of that electricity bill though. If you max out your like rating with one of the lovely ladies in the vanilla unicorn, you'll gain their phone number and then you can actually call them to your apartment for a private dance. A cool little detail, your clothes will only actually get wet up to the level that you went in water. This is a small little detail that a lot of games don't actually take the effort to do. There's a secret walkway under the pier, so if you ever need to sneak up on someone, maybe this is a pretty good way to do it. Not only can you shoot gas tanks, but if you go up and punch one, it will also blow up. Our characters must be insanely strong to be able to do this. If you kick these chairs at the end of the pier, they will eventually break, but it takes a bit of effort. If you're in passive mode and you kick a troublemaker out of your nightclub, then walk straight back into the nightclub, that troublemaker will reappear indefinitely until you stop walking in and out. This is a really fast way to boost your popularity and your nightclub back up to full. The Ruiner 2000 is the only vehicle in the game that will actually shock players that try to get in when they don't have access. You can launch golf balls into your friends if you just turn around and aim at them. It's pretty funny, but I mean, you're probably gonna lose the game if you do that, so maybe wait until you have a bit of a lead to do this one, you know? The Troublemaker is not always the same person when you actually kick them out. You can see here, this dude looks completely different to the guy that's gonna appear in this cutscene when I throw him out. So I don't know, maybe we got the wrong guy? Hmm. Similar to Franklin in the Dr. Dre contract, Pavel will actually recognize when you have your own truck in the setup for the long fin in the Kayaparico heist.
when you deliver a customer's vehicle from the auto shop and when you complete the auto shop contracts, you will now get LS Car Meet Rep. This was a change Rockstar made in the middle of 2022 because people were complaining that they couldn't get LS Car Meet Rep very quick. If you're a returning player, you'd be happy to know that now the Oppressor Mark II only has 20 rockets. I wouldn't quite say it's balanced, but it's a lot worse than it was years ago. This is the buggiest building in all of GTA. Let me show you all of the glitches. This ladder makes you glitch into the sign. The sign is floating. And the lights aren't actually attached to anything. Around the back there's these weird ladders that only work backwards and bug out the camera. This booth at the airport has bulletproof glass and only one way in. It's almost like Rockstar forgot to add this window on purpose. Grand Theft Auto's healing system is very, very strange. You can actually survive underwater even though your character is drowning as long as you have snacks. You can just keep healing yourself over and over, apparently giving your character more air or something. I'm not too sure, man. I feel like if I was drowning, snacks wouldn't be my first option. I'm surprised at how many players don't even know this feature exists. You can highlight any other player on your minimap. The easiest way to do this is through your interaction menu and it can help you find players that you want to track down easier. These next two facts were first discovered by Dark Viper AU, so shout out to him. If you take a BMX into shallow water and jump, you may actually get the floating BMX glitch. Also from Dark Viper, if you throw five sticky bombs underwater, it creates this effect. If you drive into this window at the Life Invader store, you instantly die. I'm, I'm not sure why, that's gotta be a bug. Deep underwater, there's a reference to Lost. This bunker here looks almost exactly like it does in Lost. Rockstar clearly had a difficult time coding the parachute drops because all across Los Santos, the parachute drops normally bug into the ground. Even if you reverse into one of your garages, it will always show a little cutscene of you driving forward. The Oppressor Mark 1 is based off the Street Hawk movie. This bike looks almost the exact same. When you have your phone out, you actually can't toggle the headlights on your car. This is one of the very strange facts in the entire game. On the Southern San Andreas Super Auto's website, the Vapid Retinue has a much higher quality photo than any other car in the game. They must have hired a professional photographer for this one or something. I don't know, man. After scouting out Cayo Perico, the fastest way back to the plane is actually just to die. Normally when I'm doing it, I just jump off this tower here and teleport back to the plane. Spoiler alert, Dr. Friedlander is actually in the last of those missions. This caused a lot of confusion because people thought he died in story mode when Michael can kill him at the end of their therapy sessions, but this actually isn't the canon ending. In this mission, you don't actually have to kill Dr. Friedlander, you can just let him get away. That is now the canon ending. If you break your vehicles that are stored in the facility, like the Avenger, for example, their broken parts appear in the facility. Kinda cool. When you're towing an AA trailer, you can actually go in passive mode as the driver and have someone else in the actual AA gun. Meaning that someone behind you can still kill everyone, but no one can actually blow up the truck towing it because you're in passive mode. Once you hit $45 million of sales through your warehouses, piles of money will start appearing in your CEO office. Rockstar recently added stash houses into GTA Online. Really cool feature. With these stash houses, a couple cool facts you might want to know. There are 25 possible spawn locations. And for some reason, if you can't find the safe code when you're inside, there's only 10 possible combinations of codes. All of those are on your screen now. El Rubio is actually just a nickname. This character's real name is Juan Strickler. I don't know if he's more or less scary now that I know his name is Juan. In order to tease Red Dead Redemption 2, Rockstar introduced three different treasure hunts into GTA Online. Completing one of these will get you a stone hatchet, another one will get you the double action revolver, and the third one will get you the navy revolver. All of these are weapons that are available in Red Dead Redemption 2. If Rockstar did this for Red Dead 2, I wonder how they're gonna tease GTA 
6 in GTA Online. I reckon there's going to be some really cool events. Shout out to Gilly Master for this one. You can actually kill a god mode player with a Kanjali by starting up a headhunter mission, then driving over him and jamming them under your tank. For some reason, this is going to kill them. Even to this day, I get hundreds of comments about this one. The canon story ending to GTA 5's single player is C, Death Wish. We know this because Trevor is in the series A funding heist, Franklin owns the agency with us, and there's also been references to Michael in the Dr. Dre contract as well. He's currently working at the movie studio. All three characters are still alive, which means the canon ending is C. Drinking green juice in GTA Online is a reference to when Michael did it in single player. They do the exact same animation and don't look too pleased. You can cancel sell missions for your businesses in GTA Online by changing lobbies. As a result, you will lose some of the product, but it's a better alternative than completing some of the worst sell missions in the game. Contrary to popular belief, GTA Online actually launched October 1st, two full weeks after Grand Theft Auto V launched. A lot of people think they launched on the same day, that's not true. Rockstar wanted to give us two weeks with the single player before they let us jump into online. Just like the gunman, you can also unlock a secret hacker in the Diamond Casino heist as well. This hacker is A.V. Schwartzman, and to unlock him, you need to destroy all 50 signal jammers around the map. Another feature that not all players actually know about is you can skip pages on your phone by using left or right on the d-pad on controller or using the arrow keys on pc if you wait too long on the phone with any of the characters in the game they'll check to make sure you're still there The Tesseract is the only vehicle in all of GTA Online that for some reason is immune to the catch-up feature in races. During one of the setups for the prison contract, you have to steal a massive ramp from a movie set. What they're filming is a fake version of Terminator. And when you try and take out the Terminator, he's gonna have way more health than any of the other characters. One of the locations this event can spawn is actually in the sewers, which is also an easter egg to the sewer chase in Terminator 2. Your character will actually look in the rearview mirror when you toggle the rearview look in cars. Back in 2020, in order to tease the Kaya Perigo heist, Rockstar did this through some in-game teasers. One of which was construction outside the casino, and the other one was a random body that would wash up on shore somewhere towards the south of the map. This body was supposedly washed up from Kaya Perigo. Also in their reveal trailer for the Kaya Perigo heist, the coordinates that were on the bottom of the map actually led to some random location that no one really knew. But at this location, the roads here actually kind of look like they resemble a VI or a 6. This is what many people believe to be the first teaser for Grand Theft Auto 6. When you're in a motorcycle club, you can turn on formation assist. This means that anyone on a motorbike will go as fast as the leader. Which means, yes, even the Faggio can go just as fast as the fastest bike in the game. When you're on your phone, instead of spamming the back button to get out of all of the websites that you're in, you can just press triangle on PlayStation or Y on Xbox, and that will instantly close your phone. If you jump into the police riot van, you actually get full armor. This can actually be pretty useful whenever you're fighting the cops. If you get into an ambulance, on the other hand, you'll actually get a massive chunk of your health back. Pretty cool that Rock Rockstar thought to add that. If someone's locking onto you with guided missiles, you can actually just shoot a flare gun and the missiles will go to the flare. This is really useful if you're driving around in a car or even a plane or helicopter that doesn't have countermeasures. Instead of going to ammunition or your armory, you can actually buy ammo right from your interaction menu. Crazy how many people don't actually know this, but it's very, very useful. If you're in an unskippable phone call, and I know how annoying they are, believe me, you can actually just bring up the pause menu and that will instantly end that call. If you're on PlayStation, you can actually change the radio by swiping up or down on the touchpad, and you can change weapons while driving by swiping left or right. Getting the high score on all of the bunker shooting range challenges gives you different rewards. One of them is an extra five capacity slots for throwables. And as we all know, you can never have too many throwables. Activating stealth mode on 
the Akula or the Raiju Jet will bring your wanted level down by two stars. A lot of people don't actually know this one, but the handbrake does work in boats as well. Boats can be very difficult to turn, but if you hold the handbrake, it will turn a lot faster. Pulling back on the joystick in a boat makes it go faster normally. A basic tip to go faster in boats is pull back when the water is calm and push forward on the joystick when you're in wavy water. If a player's in an armored vehicle and they're throwing sticky bombs at you, if you shoot the sticky bomb, it will instantly destroy the vehicle, no matter how armored the vehicle is. When you're in the back seat of the armored Karuma, you can shoot in a full 360 degrees. The armored Karuma is great, but as the driver, the inability to shoot a full 360 is kind of one of the only downsides. All GTA Online players should be using GTAweb.eu. It's a live action updating map that shows you all of the daily collectibles and locations for anything you can need. And no, this is not sponsored. It genuinely is just one of the best tools for any GTA Online player. With the latest update to GTA Online, you can now teleport from your hangar straight down to the airport. You can do this by walking over here in your hangar, teleporting down to Flight School, which is right at the gates of LSIA. There's two more other places to fast travel from. The first is your agency. You can do that by going over here. And you can also fast travel from your casino penthouse by going over to the phone over here. Here. There is an additional fast travel as well, although it's not from a property, this one's actually from the taxis. If you call a taxi and hop in the back, if you set your location to one of the points of interest, unfortunately you can't use a custom waypoint, you can actually pay a little fee and you'll fast travel right there. Unfortunately though, that one does have a 48 minute cooldown. When taking cover on a corner, if there's a wall next to you, that's sort of on the other side of a doorway, if you just poke your head out and then press the cover button again, you'll switch walls. Kind of looks like you're John Wick or something, it's pretty cool. If you plan on playing the Kaya Perico heist a lot, definitely buy the Sparrow. It's one of the fastest helicopters in the game and you can store it in your submarine, which makes everything a lot faster. If you haven't already, do all the treasure hunts. They're some of the best ways to make money in the game for beginners and they actually just got a payout increase too. If you finish all of the first dose story missions in order, you get the Brigade 6x6 for free. And if you finish all of the last dose missions in order, you get a free electric supercar called the Virtue. If you have an acid lab you don't actually need to go into the lab to start resupply missions or just to buy supplies you can just call mutt on your phone and do it there for any of your service vehicles like the kasaka submarine the avenger terabyte if it's nowhere near you you can actually just request it again and it will spawn at the closest possible spot if you have saved outfits and you change your outfit in your interaction menu that will automatically save your profile so if you just completed a mission and you want to change lobbies for whatever reason, just change your outfit and that will automatically save the game so that your mission progress doesn't get deleted. Any advanced players will want to own a gun locker in one of your properties. What a gun locker does is it actually lets you customize your loadout and remove a lot of the weapons on your weapon wheel. That way you don't have to scroll through all of the bad weapons every time you want to pull out a gun. If you're a low level player, you can actually just call Merryweather for a helicopter pickup for $1,000. When they land, you can just shoot the driver and take the helicopter for yourself. Aim your weapon when you land after parachuting, and this will actually skip the animation where you take off your parachute. If you own a high-end apartment that has a heist room, set up a heist and don't actually play it. Then you can just use the invite as a fast travel whenever you want to get out of a sticky situation. Certain helmets in the game allow you to have night vision or thermal vision. If you have those helmets, you can toggle it in the style section in the interaction menu. If you're being followed by a helicopter that has two gunners on either side, if you actually just kill the two gunners but leave the pilot alive, the helicopter will keep following you. But what that means is it won't spawn in any more helicopters. So it'll just be a helicopter with no weapons following you around. This is pretty useful in a lot of cell missions. For console players, you can now change to hold to sprint in your settings menu. For years and years, you had to spam that X button or A if you're on Xbox to sprint and those days are no more. If you call your mechanic, you can now add a custom name tag to each garage. This is pretty useful so you don't get confused about what's in every single garage. If you hold the handbrake when your car is in mid-air, you can flat spin the car instead of the usual corkscrew axis. This is really, really useful to land correctly and definitely something you're going to want to know if you like racing. You can put your 
own points of interest on the map. Is that useful? Eh, probably not, but you can do it. A pretty unknown feature is you can commend other players. If you do that, it'll give them small discounts at ammunition. The cargo bob can pick up the truck for your excess bunker deliveries. This is very helpful and saves a lot of time. Also saves you the annoying mission of driving the ammunition vehicle all the way across the map while NPCs are shooting at you. A lot of players forget that you can cook grenades while driving, just like you can when you're on the ground. This is very useful when you're being chased by NPCs, as you often are, and if you time the explosion right, you'll blow up anyone following you. Raids on your MC businesses only happen if you're an MC president, so whenever you're going outside, make sure you disband your MC. If you're doing a race that's locked in first person, if you press and hold the cinematic button, which is circle on PlayStation, and B on Xbox, you'll actually still be able to drive in third person, which is kind of cheating. When you request your personal vehicle, either through the interaction menu or through your mechanic, if you look directly down at the ground, it will spawn a lot closer to you. That's because the game really doesn't like spawning your vehicle in when you're looking at the location it can spawn. So if you're looking at the ground, obviously you're not looking at where the vehicle can spawn and it'll spawn as close as it can. For the PvP players out there, if you're pinned down and someone's closing in on your location, Call a ma and call a mugger on the player that's coming towards you, and when the mugger knocks them down, it'll give you some time to either get away or kill them. The best place to lose the cops in the entire map is the sewer tunnels. If you don't know how to get into the sewer tunnels, there's two entries. One of them is on the main highway right here, and the other one is just south of the casino. Never buy the document forgery office. It is by far the worst business in the game for making money, and a lot of players actually end up buying it because it's pretty cheap. But trust me, stay far, far away. On PlayStation, holding up on the D-pad after you receive an invite will automatically open your phone and accept the invitation. I don't know how, but after 10 years, that's something that I didn't even know before I started making this video. If someone goes ghosted to you because you killed them too many times, if you put a bounty on them, that will actually remove them being ghosted to you and you can kill them again. During the On Parade mission, which is one of the worst missions in the entire game, instead of trying to kill the Avengers, you can actually just fly the jet into the city and there's a good chance the Avengers will crash into the mountain or you can fly on the other side of Mount Chiliad and hopefully they run into that mountain as well. If you're in a lobby for a full GTA Online day, which is 48 minutes, once it hits 48 minutes, you'll have to pay all of the staff in your businesses. This is your daily expenses fee. But if you change lobbies before the 48 minutes is up, that timer will actually reset and you won't have to pay your bills. It's faster to walk through buildings in first person. There's certain properties that you can't run in in GTA and if you switch to first person, your character will walk faster. Did you know the chicken outside the Cluck and Bell Farms factory has a traffic cone on its head? And yes, you can shoot it off. Walking in the power station will actually give you an electric shock. That's a nice little touch. At the Bell Building, there is actually a map of GTA 4's Liberty City. And yes, it is the same map. A complete copy and paste from GTA 4. Pretty cool. If you jump up on these bins, pedestrians will no longer be able to fight you. They're just gonna completely forget how physics work. There's too much rooms at Franklin's first house that are clear references and easter eggs to the Super Mario Brothers. Red for Mario and green for Luigi. At warehouse there's a secret snowman just at the back behind these boxes here. He's just sort of staring, having a good time. A lot of the wheelie bins in the game actually say Rockstar North on them. If you're unaware, Rockstar North is the studio that primarily worked on Grand Theft Auto V. The traffic lights around the map turn on at 7pm and they don't just turn on, they actually have a flicker animation as well. If you have a cargo bob, you can pick up any of the portaloos around the map. Let's just hope there were no lonely construction workers doing their business in there, because uh, that would get pretty messy. You can also pick up certain boulders around the map with a cargo bob. Now, I'm not really sure what the cargo bob is actually hooking onto here, but still kind of cool. This one's probably a bit obvious, but Fort Zancudo is actually hidden on your map. The reason for that is because it's supposed to be a classified location. But nowadays, yeah, it's not really classified at all. The glass on bus stations is some of the only glass in the game that breaks somewhat realistically. Fruit only falls from one specific tree, and it's this one right here. If you drive into it over and over again, fruit will fall. 
I'm not really sure why this is the only one though. There's an incredibly creepy giant chessboard out front of one of the mansions at the top of the city. This might be the creepiest chessboard I have ever seen in my life. There's a random floating light under the main bridge near the docks. Initially, I thought this was just a bug and not an actual easter egg, but considering that this is on PS5 and this is like the third remaster of GTA 5, Rockstar hasn't removed it, so I think it might be an easter egg. This stop sign on the top left side of the city is facing the wrong way. There's two random NPCs in Sandy Shores that whatever vehicle you're in will always lock onto. Also, if you ever go near them, they're instantly aggressive and try and kill you. Even if you break a ladder, you can still climb it. Outside Franklin's house in Vinewood Hills in online, you'll see both Franklin and Tanisha's cars. However, you can't actually steal this and these are two of the only vehicles on the map that you can't actually steal. Outside of Humane Labs, there's this one small building that's strangely heavily guarded by men in black suits, as well as security cameras. If you attack them, you'll instantly get a two-star wanted level. This lighthouse only rotates when you're actually looking at it, and when you look away from it, you can see that the light just stops and pauses. This is probably just to save computing power, considering when this game first came out, it was on PlayStation 3. At the docks, there's one building that has incredible massive cockroaches. This is terrifying and nope you can't shoot them and for some reason they can go through walls. This is my worst nightmare. I'm sure we've all seen this orange ball but did you know you can actually shoot it and roll it around the map? It's kind of fun and I've actually spent way too much time doing this I won't lie. Windmills in the wind farm actually spin at different speeds. There's a sign on Innocent Boulevard that says Rehab Island. This is a clear easter egg to the video game Dead Island. They use the same color scheme, font, and have the palm tree in the middle. Every anchor in GTA 5 is a complete lie. None of the anchors even touch the floor of the ocean. If you go to the cemetery in Los Santos at around 11am, this dog will spawn. If you follow the dog, it will go to a specific grave and sit there. This is an easter egg to Greyfriars Bobby, which was a Sky Terrier from Edinburgh, which is actually where Rockstar North Studios are, and this dog spent 14 years visiting the grave of its deceased owner. That's actually a real story, and I'm not crying, you are. Inside Lester's house, he has a date circled on his calendar. That's Friday, September 17th, 2013, which is the release date of GTA 5. There's a barrel on top of the Mile High Club that infinitely leaks oil when you shoot it. It never blows up, it just continues to leak oil. If you go right here outside the Vanilla Unicorn, you're actually going to be bulletproof. There's like this invisible wall here that you just walk through and you can't get shot through it. So use that however you like. There's a sign at the top of the GTA 5 map that says this does not exist. Rockstar has a history of putting similar signs in most of their games, so no surprise to see it in GTA as well. In the metro tunnels, there's a map of Los Santos on one of the signs here, but the map isn't completely finished. Sections like the airport are completely blank. A lot of the generators around the map have this specific paint on them. This paint job is an easter egg to the Borderlands character Claptrap, or for you Borderlands nerds, CL4PTP. We've all probably seen this clock in the city, but what's interesting is the clock is actually correct. It shows the in-game time. That might not seem like a big deal, but considering the lighthouse light that we showed earlier only moves when you're looking at it, I think this is pretty cool. This porta potty is actually glitched, and there's a porta potty inside a porta potty, like the double stack and the dumps. These three benches here are quite unique. The one in the middle has a memorial to Chris Edwards, who was a senior artist at Rockstar Games and passed away in 2014. What's interesting though is the other two benches either side of Chris's memorial bench both have graffiti on them but the actual memorial bench doesn't, which I think is pretty cool. Outside the Vanilla Unicorn, there's a sign advertising the Cartoon Network, which of course is an easter egg to the Cartoon Network. Pretty nice little pun by Rockstar there, pretty cool. There's numbers on the side of the highway when you convert them into what number of the alphabet they correspond to translate to all you had to do was follow the damn train, CJ. There's a grass maze over here at the university. You may have seen this, but what's interesting is when you go inside the maze, you can't actually expand your map. That way you can't actually see how to get out, so it acts like a proper maze and you have to find your way out. Pretty cool. You may have seen this massive purple dinosaur on the highway on the right side of the map. 
if you didn't pick it up at the time, yes, this is a reference to Barney the Purple Dinosaur. Inside Lester's house, he has action figures. The two most notable ones in here are clear references to both Master Chief and Superman. This Waxhaven mural in Vinewood has clear references and Easter eggs. It's a massive mural of Marilyn Monroe, Charles Chaplin, John Wayne, and Elvis Presley. In the scrapyard, there is a tank that looks exactly like its real life version, the T-3485. Now Rockstar, this would be a really cool vehicle to add in a future DLC. If you shoot electrical boxes, they actually do make sparks and eventually they explode. It's little details like this that I feel puts Rockstar Games above other developers for these types of games. This one just shows the insane level of detail. There's a sign on the side of the highway here next to the beach that clearly has graffiti on it. So what did the construction workers do? Well, they put barbed wire around it so no one could graffiti it again. That's an awesome little detail. There's a lot of massive rocks and boulders around the map, but the only ones you can actually move are these smaller ones like this. They all look exactly the same and you can shoot them, run into them, drive into them, whatever. That's how you get them to move. In the Polito Forest, there's this massive statue holding a keg of beer. But what's interesting is if you actually shoot this barrel, it has beer in it. It's going to leak out beer. If you drive into the yellow parking poles, they'll actually bend in the way that you crash into them. Unfortunately, I know way too many people who have done this in real life as well. If you shoot the public phones in any of the phone booths around the map, it will actually make a ringing noise when you shoot it. You do actually sink in any of the mud around the map. I'm sure most of us already know that, but did you know if you want to run faster, you can actually do this by aiming and sprinting at the same time. Any buildings that actually have holes in them do correctly show the sunlight and the shadows on the other side. I was pretty impressed when I saw that considering this is a 10 year old game. Personally, I can't wait to see what the lighting is like in GTA 6. This sign here also doesn't make any sense, tells you to enter the parking in two different directions. No wonder the drivers in Los Santos are so bad. I mean, the road signs just don't tell them what to do. All of the parked airplanes at the airport actually have a much larger hitbox than they should. You can see here, this car should at least somewhat be able to fit under this plane here, but no, it's got a much bigger hitbox than it looks. In the ocean at Polito Bay, there's a sun Duncan UFO, one of the many UFO easter eggs that Rockstar has included in GTA 5 and GTA Online over the years. Some of the power stations have an orange sticker that says 1.21 GW, which most likely means 1.21 gigawatts, which is a reference to Back to the Future. This isn't surprising considering the Deluxo is in the game, which is of course the DeLorean from Back to the Future as well. In Vinewood, there's a museum called Bishop's WTF, which is a clear parody of the famous Ripley's Believe It or Not museums. In the desert in Sandy Shores, on a few rocks, the number eight is inscribed. There's also an inscription that says one is done, two was fun, three tried to run, four called mum, five is not alive, six is Nix, seven's in heaven, eight won't wait. This is most likely a reference to Freddy Krueger's poem in A Nightmare on Elm Street. This calendar is in a few locations around the map. It's got a picture of a reefer and a caption that says I'm on a boat which is a reference to the Lonely Island song called I'm on a Boat, which came out just before GTA 5 released. The lifeguard huts on the beach shut when it hits 6 p.m. at night, but you can't actually see it happen. You have to look away, and when you look back, it'll be shut. There's different spray cans around the map that you can shoot, and they'll spray different colors whenever you shoot them. This billboard near the sewers is completely broken. It doesn't have anything on it, and it just says temp. Most likely for temporary. I don't know if this was intentional, just as a joke to say they couldn't find an advertiser for that billboard, or if Rockstar just forgot to put something on it. This sign is a massive troll. This TV clearly looks like it's meant to be jumped through, but it's actually got glass on it. And even if you shoot the glass, the glass will break, but you still can't go through it. Now that's just a massive blue ball. In the hipster camp, there's a line of letters and numbers here. It's 6EQUJ5. That translates to wow with an exclamation mark at the end and this is an easter egg to the signal that was found in 1977 
where it was believed that humans communicated with an alien life form who replied with, wow, this property is a massive equestrian property. It's got a bunch of horse stables, paddocks, and horse arenas. Most of us probably know this by now, but there is a secret bunker on Mount Chiliad. This was one of the biggest mysteries in all of GTA 5 until the Doomsday Heists, where we went inside the bunker and attempted to kill Avon Hertz and Clifford. The vending machines on the map only have 10 sodas. After that, they run out. At the Playboy Mansion, there's these really cool cave pools. Things like this really make me want a mansions update in GTA Online. I just feel like that would be the perfect final DLC for this game. Even though they're very short, you can't jump or mantle over most of the hedges in the game. Which, yeah, it kind of makes sense, but still for gameplay purposes, it'd kind of be nice. If you try to run on a conveyor belt, your character will just stumble and fall off. There's a rent-a-car agency named Escalera. Escalera is a town in Red Dead Redemption. If you go to the beach, a lot of the towels on the beach used by pedestrians will say I heart Vice City. Maybe that was an easter egg that Rockstar was planning on going to Vice City next all along. In Chamberlain Hills, there's a graffitied sign that says welcome back, we missed you last time. This is welcoming players back to San Andreas, because San Andreas in 2004 of course took place in the same city, and Rockstar included this sign in one of their first trailers for the game. On this wall, on Low Power Street, there's graffiti of Los Santos sprayed in the style of the original Grand Theft Auto font. You can call some of the numbers on the for sale signs around the map. Usually the number will say it's busy, but occasionally someone answers it and just hangs up the phone immediately. This photo of a car in your vehicle warehouse actually shows your original mechanic driving it, Johnny on the spot. This is an easter egg to when the game launched and the mechanic would actually deliver your vehicle to you. There's a massive trench on the east side of the map that is incredibly creepy. It's this massive underwater trench that will probably give you nightmares. In the Yellow Jack Inn bar, there's a photo of Nico Bella. In case there was any doubt, this confirms that he is canon in this universe. Also around the map, there's wanted posters of Nico as well. So this likely confirms that Nico is still alive. At the Yellow Jack Inn, there's bloody footsteps around the eight ball pool table in the back. This could be a reference to the serial killer Merle Abrahams and his obsession with the number eight, just like the Easter egg with the number eights all over the rocks that we spoke about earlier. At the Yellow Jack Inn in Sandy Shores, here you can see four shields. The top two have the words Best of Show 2008 with a motorbike engraved. This is a reference to the year that GTA 4 came out and the expansion Lost and Damned. The middle shield says Best of Show 2010 with an engraving of a stagecoach wheel. This is a reference to Red Dead Redemption and its release year. In the back rooms of the Vanilla Unicorn, there's a sticker on one of the lockers that says Honkers. This is an easter egg to the Honkers. Honkers Gentleman Club in GTA 4. In GTA 5, we got Vanilla Unicorn. In GTA 4, it was Honkers. In any two-car garage that you can buy, up on this shelf here, there'll be a license plate that says Liberty City. Unfortunately though, we can't get these license plates on our own cars, at least not yet. Behind the counter in the Yellow Jack Inn, you can see several $69 bills hanging on the wall here. The image on these bills is the famous cover girl for GTA San Andreas. The bills also say 10 12 2004 6 p.m., which is 14 days before GTA San Andreas released. Strange. Over in Strawberry, there's a lot of graffiti. One of them, this one here, looks like a silhouette of John Marston. Another cool nod to Red Dead. During your Cayo Perico high setups, don't waste time flying all the way back to your Kasatka in the middle of the ocean. Instead, when you start up the heist, park your Kasatka right down this canal here. This is the best possible location to put it because this is the closest location to all of the prep missions. Throughout the entire heist, this could save you about 5 or 10 minutes. You might wonder why a lot of tryhards always play in first person. Well, the reason for that is because it's a lot easier to strafe. We all know how clunky the character movements are in GTA Online. 
but when you're in first person, your character is a lot more smooth, so it makes it a lot easier to dodge bullets. While you're in third person, this doesn't work in first person, you can actually just shoot through the corner of most walls. So don't risk dying, just shoot through the wall. If you can't call Lester or bribe the authorities and you need to use your wanted level, you should be calling in one of your service vehicles. Mainly, the easiest ones are the Acid Lab, MOC, or the Avenger. Once you call that in, all you have to do is drive over to it and hop inside and you'll instantly lose your wanted level. A lot of the businesses and properties you buy actually have free weapons inside. For example, in the Kasatka submarine, you can just walk down there and get free Molotovs. In the hangar, if you want to go up to the top of your hangar, there's a bunch of guns that you can get there for free as well. Almost all of your businesses have weapons that are just sitting there that you can walk over and get for free. If you find the homing launcher annoying to use, did you know you can actually change the target that your homing launcher is locking onto by pressing the 7 and 8 buttons on your number pad? Yeah. Unfortunately, there's no way to do this on console, but for PC players, hopefully that helps you out. If you like to gamble, you don't actually have to scroll all the way through in the casino to get to the max bet on horse betting. It doesn't tell you anywhere on your screen, but you can actually just press the same max bet button that you can with the slots. On PlayStation, that's square. Xbox, it's X, and that'll set your bet to the max bet. You've probably done the payphone hit where you need to pick the guy up in the taxi, but you don't have to wait for Franklin to tell you where the taxi is. Just call up downtown Cabco, take out the driver and complete the mission. Or if you own a taxi, just call Pegasus and call your taxi in. If your auto shop delivery is too far away, just blow up your car. I know it sounds crazy, but blow up the car straight away, walk back inside, and it'll still be there, so you can just retry. This also works for your bunker ammunition runs as well. So if it's too far away, just blow it up, go back inside, and try again. Crazy how things just magically respawn in GTA. You are playing the Kaya Perico heist wrong. Chances are when you get into the compound you're going this way but the problem is this takes about 38 seconds. So I'm going to show you two ways to do it faster. Both of these are on your screen now. For both of these you have to go right instead of left. One takes you through the courtyard, the other one takes you across the roof. If you do try one of these two Kaya Perico routes, jumping across the roof is a little bit risky and you might fall off. So you might actually want to take it a bit slower and as you can see they both take around 35 seconds seconds, so you may as well just do the courtyard one to be a bit safer. It's actually possible to take out the Juggernaut solo without getting detected. The best loadout to use for this is Conspirator, and what you want to do is either go up behind him and smack him with a throwable, or just run into him, and then absolutely blast this dude in the back while he's on the ground. Like seriously, just completely lay into this guy while he's laying down. Blow that entire load. During the safe code setup mission where you have to go into the diamond casino penthouse, it's actually possible to tell exactly which room this guy's gonna spawn in. So if the two guards are guarding the safe house that's on the right wall of the interior of the casino, then the guy with the safe codes will be on the right as you enter in that bedroom. If the guards are on the bottom wall, he's gonna be in the party room, and if the guards are on the top wall, he'll be in the office, sort of in the middle of the penthouse. And as you can see in this clip here, the guards were on the bottom wall, so the guy with the safe codes was in the party room. You've probably seen a sleeping guard in Los Santos at some point, a little blue dot that pops up on your map. Well, if you loot him and get his key, You'll now be able to go into El Rubio's office and unlock the Perico pistol that's in his drawer just here. There is a dead body inside the trunk of a sunken car right out front of the drainage channel. That's pretty spooky. For anyone that's not good at hacking, let me show you exactly how to hack the fingerprints very, very quickly. Step one, the very top fingerprint is going to be the top of the fingerprint, obviously. All we have to do then is make the second fingerprint down the top fingerprint, and then move to the right once. Then you go down to the third one, make it the second one, and then move it across once. Just keep doing this, go all the way down to the bottom of the fingerprint, and you'll be in very, very quick. A lot of people get detected in Kaya Perico still, and it's because you're killing this guy. So my advice would be to stop killing this guy, but if you really want to kill him, you need to wait till he goes to this exact spot. He's going to move a little bit further, and you need to wait till he stands completely still. The reason you keep getting detected is because the Juggernaut actually walks through this area, and because the guards can see dead bodies, you're going to get detected. 
If you're wondering why you never get the pink diamond, it's because Rockstar changed the Kaya Perico heist so that it's very hard to get the pink diamond if you played a Kaya Perico heist within the last 72 hours. So if you really want the pink diamond, you're gonna have to wait at least three days before you play this heist again. A lot of people don't know how many cameras you can actually destroy. The answer is five. If you destroy a sixth camera, you're gonna get detected. In 2022, Rockstar added in a patch that allows guards to detect dead bodies. Prior to that, they just didn't notice them. You can actually use the assault shotgun to move dead bodies if you want to as well. There's a secret hidden combat shotgun in the compound. There's seven different spawn points for this shotgun, but this is the only way you can get this gun. For whatever reason, if you set your infiltration point as the North Dock, this will allow you to loot the locked location that would normally require two players to open. And even though this heist is almost three years old, Rockstar still hasn't patched this. We all know about the forklift in Kaya Perico's hangar where you can go up and get that extra loot. But what's interesting is this room right next to that sort of lockup has a door that can only be opened from the inside. You can actually turn the power off to the entire island and you have to do this up at the airstrip. There's two different levers that you need to pull and then all of the security cameras will go down. You don't actually need to buy suppressors. Even if you don't buy the suppressors in your setup screen while you're setting up the rest of the heist, you can actually just add them once you start the heist here for completely free. You can actually do the entire heist without killing a single person. People said it couldn't be done, it can and it was by yours truly. Since then, probably hundreds if not thousands of people have done it without killing a single person, so just look it up on YouTube if you wanna see how to do it. All of the guards on Kaya Perico Island have really bad vision. Yeah, that's right. They don't even notice when their friends are dead right next to them. El Rubio, maybe instead of filling the vault every week, you should buy your employees some glasses. One of the reasons people found the Loch Ness Monster so quickly was most likely because Rockstar put a little teaser on the beach back here. Yeah, that is a sand sculpture of the Loch Ness Monster. Well now, what do we have here? Sand sculpture. But it looks familiar, no? I wonder if people here have ever... No, it is not possible. Not this for self. Excuse me, Captain. I was just thinking out loud. Inside El Rubio's office, there are a bunch of pictures on his wall. The community has speculated that most of these photos are from Red Dead Redemption 2 and have traced El Rubio's heritage back to some characters in Red Dead Redemption 2 as well. Not only that, but you can also see from this image here that El Rubio is friends with Simeon. How strange is that? That's really weird, but kind of cool. The entire Kaiparuko Island is completely powered by solar energy. The reason for that is so that El Rubio can be completely off the grid and so that the government can't track him. Pretty crazy. Ah yes, of course. Solar Farm keeps Mr. Rubio off the grid and maintains his credentials as friend of the environment. Not much we can do to it here. If we want to cut off the power, there are better ways to do it. Across the island, there's multiple graveyards, or sort of mini cemeteries. The first one can be found on the mainland, and Pavel will say this. A graveyard. Must be from a time before Mr. Rubio came to the island. Leave it in peace, I think. And the second can be found on one of the mini islands off the main island, and Pavel will say this. Up near the airstrip side of the island, on your way over to the communications tower, there is a massive beached whale, and apparently, Pavel has seen a creature like this before. Well, well, you do not see this too often on dry land. It must have become beached. You know, I think I have met such a creature once before. Years ago, I was abducting CEO of Lumbank from cruise ship not so far from here, and... Actually, never mind. I do not wish to speak ill of the dead. It seems as though we weren't the first people to get up to some suspicious activity on El Rubio's island, as around the map, 
there's a few different dead people. The first one is just a bit further along the beach from the whale. It's a dead smuggler. Seeing this reminds me, I need to pay my IAA tariff. Maybe a little bit scarier is this guy right here. He's dressed up for the party that we went to the first time we went to Kayaparico. So this absolutely could have been how we ended up. Well, well, um, I guess at the last party, uh, perhaps. Just think, if we do not pull this off perfectly, we too will be found like this. It's a good thing we were successfully able to pull off the Kaibrico heist, because if not, we could have ended up in a torture cage just down the hill from the communications tower like this one. Torture cage. Typical cartel methods. Take a good look. This will be your home for a very long time if you are caught. Although it can be survived. I once spent a whole summer in one of these. Let me tell you, the Welsh are a people not to be trifled with. It looks like there have been some serious threats around Kaya Perico over the years because buried deep at the bottom of the ocean we have a crashed ship along with a massive military convoy on it. I don't want to know how this got here, but El Rubio must have done a pretty good job of protecting his island, I'll just say that. Not only has El Rubio had threats in the ocean, he's also had a lot of threats in the air, particularly from the IAA. As we can see, an IAA buzzard crashed, most likely taken down by the air defenses on the island not too long ago. The bottom of the ocean around this island is actually really cool and freaky. Like, what is this? Apparently it's a whale skeleton. You let me know, any marine biologists. Is this a whale skeleton? But what is this next to it? It's an alien egg. Interesting. Rockstar really does love putting things underwater. If we go pretty much to the very end of the threshold, like as far as you can go in the water, we can also find a meteorite at the bottom of the ocean. Now this is really cool. Also scattered around the island at the bottom of the ocean are a couple of crashed planes. One of which looks to be a crash FIB Luxor and the other, well, just possibly a passenger jet. Pretty creepy. If you're sitting in the passenger seat in an armored Karuma, you're really just limiting your ability to actually kill people. For whatever reason, you can't actually shoot in a full 360 degrees from the front passenger seat. But if you're in the back passenger seat, you can shoot a full 360 degrees, no issues at all. So if your friend's ever driving an armored Karuma, hop in the back seat. If you're in a helicopter and you're jumping out or landing your helicopter to go into your agency or CEO office, you're wasting time. Both of these buildings have a helipad on the top of it. So you can actually use it just fly over it, it'll let you know you can land it and just walk inside. It's a cool animation and it'll save you a few seconds every time you want to go in. During the recover vehicle security contracts, you know when you press the button to open the shutter door and more enemies spawn and it's really annoying? Yeah, well you can actually stop these additional enemies spawning in if you push the switch to open the door before you get in the car that you're trying to steal. Cool little tip. 
When you're looking for Jeans Cash, if you actually just get a sniper rifle and look through the scope, you can hear the beep and narrow down the location a lot easier. The Insurgent Pickup is a Pegasus vehicle, but if you actually take it to your MOC or anywhere where you can customize it, it will become a personal vehicle. When you're taking a selfie, if you press the left analog stick, your character's facial expression will change. If you're on PC, just press X. If you want to check someone's bounty and you don't know what it is, you just have to call Lester. Click on Set Bounty and go to the player who already has a bounty on them. Click on their name and it'll show you how much the bounty is. If you don't own an HSW car, but you want to do the HSW time trial, that's okay. You can just borrow your friends or borrow someone else's in the lobby. You don't actually need to own the car. When you get thrown out of the casino, that's actually the only sound your character ever makes in the entire game. They're completely silent otherwise. If you try to enter the VIP area in the casino too many times without a VIP membership, this will actually get you kicked out. If you honk your horn at a driving NPC for too long, they're gonna freak out and start speeding. 